Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And in this class, we're going to be talking about some significant dates that's coming up here very, very shortly. Okay. I brought Stacy in for a sanity check as we look at some of these significant dates. Yeah, um, I'm not really a prophecy person. I don't really um, understand a lot about it, but that does not mean that I'm not interested in it. I just, you know... I do like it. I just don't understand a lot about it. Well, we'll let you be in charge of the BS flag. Okay. okay. If something don't make sense, we'll let you call it out so that we can, you know, be sure that what we're saying is clear for everybody to understand. Mm-hmm. All right. So, now, again, we're talking about dates, and we're here now on December the 20th, 2020. And since you guys clicked on this video, you're probably really interested in dates and you're well aware of what they call the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. You know about that, Stay? No, the only thing I know about a conjunction is uh, deals with grammar and vocabulary. <laughs> okay, well, what, they, what, what everybody is really hyped up about, and there's a lot of people getting excited about this, is Jupiter and Saturn will be the closest that they've been in several hundred years on uh, December the 21st. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people are equating that to the Great Awakening or the Rapture or other events that could happen during that time. So that is tomorrow. That's actually tomorrow. You know, there's a lot of hype, but, you know, in this video, I'm going to show you how there's even a more significant date than December the 21st. This great conjunction might not be the biggest thing we actually see this week. Okay. I'm ready for it. All right. Now, as a Bible-based channel, what we like to do is always put scripture to these dates. You know, back there when people were talking about Pentecost and um, Tabernacles and the 10th day of Av and all of those days and how they could be significant, we went in and we looked at what the scripture had to say about those dates. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do. Um, in today's class is we're going to put some scripture to these dates and we're looking at December the 21st But I actually couldn't find anything on December the 21st the closest thing that I found to December the 21st is over in Ezekiel chapter 33 Okay, you want me to read it? Yeah, actually go ahead and read verse 21 And it came to pass in the 12th year of our captivity in the 10th month in the fifth day of the month, that one had escaped out of Jerusalem, came unto me, saying, The city is smitten. Okay, now this is actually a date on the sacred calendar. This is on the tenth day of the month, Tibet. So, before we go to our calendar, let me jump over here, over here to this verse that I was talking about in the book of Esther. So we can find out what is the tenth month. If you would, read verse 16. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. This is actually talking about the marriage between um, Esther and King Ahasuerus. And it's telling us that this took place in the tenth month. Now, I do find that interesting because of how everyone is expecting this great marriage supper to take place and how it took place in the 10th month. But what I wanted to point out in this verse is how it's telling us that the 10th month is called Tibet. Yes. And we can jump over here and let Wikipedia confirm that Tibet and Tibet is the exact same month. We see that Tibet and Tibet are the same words but they are spelled differently yeah you find the only time you see the name of the 10th month is in the book of esther in all of the bible but if you jump over to the talmud and other books you'll find that they wrote it as tevet but yeah we're talking about the same month mm -hmm. which is the name that you see when you look over in the book of esther um is better known as tevet which I think they're getting from the Talmud. But anyway, we see here that the fifth day of the 10th month is actually today. Mm -hmm. So this, what we're reading about over here in Ezekiel, falls on the day before the 21st. So 
in times past in ancient days on this day is when the uh, person came unto Ezekiel and said that the city is smitten. Yeah, this is when you read about over there in uh, 2 Kings in chapter 25 and other places how um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's soldiers who had already besieged Jerusalem and actually taken captives including Daniel and Ezekiel have now gone in and actually burned the entire city down. So this would be considered a watch date? It would definitely be considered a watch date and you know as close as it is to December the 21st which is tomorrow you know it could be significant so you know people would actually be watching the news to see if anything goes on related to you know what we're seeing here. Okay. But what we're seeing here is the fall of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Well, in the end times, Jerusalem doesn't fall. It's Babylon that falls and Egypt falls. Okay. Is that uh, in a spiritual sense or are you talking about the actual city? Yeah, it's actually talking about in a spiritual sense. Um, the Babylonian culture being all of the false religions of the world and the Egyptian culture being all of the economic systems of the world will all collapse according to what we read about in the book of Revelation. Okay. So, in other words, this day could actually be not that significant at all. We might not see anything, you know, related to the fall of Jerusalem. Right. Okay. But before we completely dismiss these days, talking about the 20th and the 21st of December, I want to jump over and show you guys something related to the Mayans. Now, this is a genuine thought. I really haven't heard anybody talk about this. You know, as far as that Mayan calendar we heard about back there in 2012. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Where they thought that the um, world was going to go through some significant change, if not come to a complete end in 2012. Yeah. Well, obviously it didn't. Yes. But the thing is, you know, I've, I've gone in since then and looked at... The Mayans and how they did their calculations, how they came up with their years, and they were a little bit off as far as their years are concerned. In other words, I believe they could have just got the year wrong. Okay, I don't really, I've heard about the Mayan calendar, but, you know, I really don't know a lot about it, and especially this Mayan long cal calendar <laughs> yeah it's some sophisticated stuff it took a while to kind of figure that stuff out but what you need to know about it is okay they uh, according to their count the way they calculated it is that the world would change or come to an end or whatever you want to call it on December the 21st of 2012 but when you go in and you look at how they calculated their years or their long count years um it was based on a random number and we know that that number was actually incorrect we know absolutely that the number of years that they used to calculate the long count calendar was incorrect because when they went back to the date of creation they ended up in the year 3114 BC so you're saying that where they have the year 2012 they should have had the numbers come up to 2020. I'm saying it could have. I ain't saying it should have. It very. I'm saying it just. They. It's just possible. It's just a possible. The date that they could have been shooting for, because of course they've been dead and gone for a long time. They couldn't. You know, we can't ask them. You know, but the date that they could have very well been pointing to was this great conjunction that we're expecting to see in 2020. Okay, I, I think I understand what you're saying. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. But like I said, I want to go in and I want to show you something I believe is even more significant when it comes to dates. And that's from over here in Daniel in chapter 12. Oh, I thought you were saying that today's date was the important thing you were talking about. December the 21st, where it very well could be, you know, there's a lot of people watching these, you know, the guys into astronomy, you know, with all of these Stellarium programs, they're really excited about the day, December the 21st, but, you know, me, I, if I don't see it written in the scripture, you know, I, I'm like everybody else, I'm just watching it on TV. So you said Daniel 12 has another date to offer very much so let's jump over here and we want to jump down and we want to look at the last three verses in the book of Daniel and chapter 12 because it's talking about the dates 
that we should see the events leading up to these verses. In other words, you start off in Daniel in chapter 12, at verse 1, 2, and 3. It's talking about the great awakening or the rapture. And we'll touch on the details of that here in a second. But before we do, let's jump down here and let's try to figure out what these dates are that's being given here in Daniel in chapter 12 and verse 11. Okay. If you would, go ahead and read that. 11. And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. All right, so it's giving us a time frame here of 1,290 days. It's talking about from when the daily sacrifice was taken away mm -hmm. and when an abomination of desolation will be set up. And then, if you would, go ahead and read verse 12. Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Now, this blessing that he's talking about is what we've been reading about previous in Daniel in chapter 12. It's talking about how Michael, the archangel, will stand up and how the father's people will be delivered. It's even talking about there in verse 2. I believe it's talking about how the spiritually dead will be awoken. So this is actually pointing to the great awakening. Mm -hmm. This blessing that we're reading about over here in Daniel in chapter 12 is, I believe, talking about the great awakening. And I believe Daniel in chapter 12 is telling us exactly what year this is that it will take place, even maybe to the exact date yeah you just did a post uh, a couple of days ago about you know this great awakening yeah we've done a lot of classes on the great awakening over the years probably going back you know three or four years you can probably find 30 classes that we've done on the great awakening on the third temple and even on the details of what the rapture event would actually be like okay so you're saying that in 12, it says, Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. 1,335 days. So you're saying that that time is now? Is in 2020. Okay. You want me to show you how? Yeah. Okay, well, go back up here to verse 11. You see, it says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand when was the daily sacrifice taken away. Okay. And to do that, we can go back to Daniel and chapter 1, and we see when the daily sacrifice is taken away. Yeah, that was dealing with Nebuchadnezzar. If you will, go ahead and read verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Okay, so this right here is telling us the year in which the daily sacrifice was taken away it's in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim yeah because he took away all the vessels and all the things that they used to do the sacrifice yeah you see all of that written right there in verse 2 so we prove we can go in and we can find out what year that is you know we've covered this in another video how we looked at the dates of their births of all of the patriots from Adam all the way through to Abraham and then we were able to find out the date of the Exodus and the covenant which it was given from the verses given in the scripture and then we was able to use books like uh, first Chronicles to understand the dates of the kings and we were able to lay out for certainty that this date that they actually is talking about in Daniel is in the year 606 BC but without going through all of that again in this class, we can just come over to Google and put in the search terms Jerusalem 606 BC and we can see that this is actually the time in which Nebuchadnezzar went in and sacked Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You see this website down here says confirming the exile prophecies of 606 BC. Yes. And you see down here in a website called universityofbiblicalstudies.com that it has a web page called 606 BC. First group deported. Jeremiah reveals Jerusalem's dot dot dot. So if we come back over here to Daniel and chapter 1, we see that the daily sacrifice was actually taken away in 606 BC. Mm -hmm. Looking back at chapter 12, it says, from the time that the daily sacrifice was taken away until the abomination of desolation set up, there shall be 1,290 days. So, looking at a calculator right quick, if we type in 
negative 606 for 606 BC and add 1,290 years plus one year because there was no year zero, we end up in the year 685 AD. Okay. So then we come over to Google and we simply put in Jerusalem 685 AD. We want to know what went on in Jerusalem in 685 AD and look what pops up. This is when they would have erected the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock is that abomination of desolation that was set up over there in Daniel and chapter 12. Mm -hmm. See how it's talking about set up? It's not talking about a human standing in the holy place. It's talking about this abomination that maketh desolate set up on the Temple Mount. It's talking about the Dome of the Rock. And here it is that we see that Daniel gave us the exact year in which that building was created. Going back in history, we can see that that year was actually when they built the Dome of the Rock. Yeah, I think some of the key words is set up, letting you know that, you know, it was, uh, I guess, erected. And you've done lots of classes on this before. But let's come back over it because Daniel's not finished yet. He told us the year of the Dome of the Rock, 1,290 days or 1,290 years after the daily sacrifice was taken away. But then you come down here in verse 12. He's telling us of the blessing. Go ahead and read verse 12 again. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So that's one thousand three hundred and thirty five days. And if we add those years to six eighty five A.D., we end up in the year twenty twenty. OK, yeah, I see that. Yeah. So Daniel was telling us that this blessing that we are to receive will come in the year twenty twenty. Yeah, a lot of people find that hard to believe. Because of everything that's going on in 2020. Yeah, until maybe when you jump over in the book of Malachi and chapter 4, that you see that this Elijah, the prophet, is supposed to come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, with all of this that's going on in the year 2020, could we be getting close to this dreadful day of the Lord? It seems. Well, we should be expecting that this Elijah, the prophet, to come before then. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, this is actually the same figure that we see over in Daniel and chapter 12. They just call him Michael there. Mm -hmm. My, Michael and Elijah are the exact same individuals. And you can, if you compare what we read in Daniel and chapter 12 and Malachi in chapter 3 and 4, you can see that spelled out pretty clearly. But like you said, we've covered that in many videos. But if you would, go ahead and read chapter 12 and verse 1 in the book of Daniel. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince that standeth for the children of the people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So here it is. This is talking about the great awakening here, or, you know, some refer to it as the mid-tribulation rapture. But it should be really easy to understand how the Father's people will experience this awakening before the great tribulation ever starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before these wars and famines and pestilences and antichrists and marks of the beast and all of this stuff. Wouldn't it be helpful to have this Elijah spirit with us before this ever got started? Yeah, uh, it would just make sense. We would need, I would say we would have to have him. It's absolutely necessary to have him. And here it is, what Daniel is telling us is that we can fully expect him to come in the year 2020. But the question is, what day? Yeah, because people will always say no man knows the date or the hour. People always go back to that scripture. I hear that a lot in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of people who will say that. They'll try to make it like that verse applies to everything when it comes to the scripture and dates. But I'll show you over here in the book of Matthew, which is one of only two times that we hear that phrase, nobody knows the day or the hour. And you see here that it's actually talking about the date in which the heaven and the earth will pass away. Mm. Read verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away now what this is talking about is a prophecy of what happens to the earth that we know that happens at the end of the millennial age 
after the 1,000 years of Christ's reign here on the earth, we find out by way of scripture that the whole planet is going to burn up in flames. Yeah, it goes on to say, but of that day, which let us know that he's talking about heaven and earth, that day that shall pass away, that day and hour knoweth no man. So I never, I've read this many of times, but I never thought about it. But yeah, he's talking about the previous verse. Yeah, he's talking about when the heaven and the earth is going to go away. And the reason why nobody knows the day or the hour is because in no scripture are you going to find the exact date that that's actually going to take place. You, he tells us that it's going to happen. You look in here at a chart created by Clarence Larkin for his book, Dispensational Truth. He created this chart about 100 years ago. But you see that he already knew about what he called the renovation of the earth by fire. Apparently, you could find out in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 13, that the entire earth is going to burn up. Mm -hmm. But again, we're never told when. Yeah. And so that's why over here in Matthew, he's saying that nobody knows the day or the hour. But now that's the first time you hear it. And the next time that you hear about the phrase, nobody knows the day or the hour is in Matthew and chapter 25 and verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh. So this right here is talking about the coming of the Son of Man in that time in which we hear about the sky cracking and he coming across the sky with 10,000 of his saints. Yeah. He's saying that nobody knows the day or the hour. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're talking about over here in Daniel in chapter 12. We're talking about the time in which Michael will stand up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, over there in the book of Malachi in chapter 4, we see that this happens before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And we know that the Messiah comes during the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. So we're mm -hmm. talking about two separate events here. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's jump back over here to the book of Daniel and see if we can understand when it is that this Elijah figure or this archangel Michael will stand up for his people. We see in chapter 1 that the daily sacrifice was taken away in the year 606 B.C., but if we jump over here to Ezekiel in chapter 24, we can find out what day and what month that event took place. 24 and 1. Again, in the ninth year, and the tenth month, and the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. So here we are hearing a word of the Lord coming on an exact date. It's saying the tenth day and the tenth month. Mm -hmm. Then read verse 2. Son of man, write thee the name of the day. Even this same day, the king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. See how many times it's saying the same date? Mm -hmm. It's letting us know the exact date that the daily sacrifice was taken away. It says the king of Babylon, that was Nebuchadnezzar, set himself against Jerusalem on the 10th day of the 10th month. It's telling us when the daily sacrifice was taken away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See that clearly, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know that to be 606 B.C. And we've added the 1,290 years plus the 1,335 years that leads us to the year 2020. So the question becomes, when is the 10th day of the 10th month in the year 2020? Yeah, that's the question. And looking back over here at the calendar from timeanddate.com, we see that that falls on what date? December 25th. December the 25th, Daniel, the book of Daniel is for some reason pointing us to the day, December the 25th of the year 2020 for this great awakening. From what I read here, and I could be wrong, you guys drop down in the comment section if, if, if I'm missing something here, because I'm not a prophet or anything, you know, I don't know the future. It just looks to me from what we're reading here in the scripture and you can pull out your own Bibles and see the same thing, that this is all pointing to December the 25th of the year 2020. And what it's talking about is what we see up here at the beginning of chapter 12. In Where it talks about Michael standing up for the children of um, 
whose names are written in the book of life. But it's also said right there, it says, and there shall be a time of trouble such right. as never was since. The, so this is talking about the beginning of the tribulation. Mm, that's what it seems like to me. Yeah. You see, it says quickly that Michael shall stand up and then you shall have a time yeah. of trouble. So it's talking about the beginning of the tribulation here in December the 25th of the year 2020. And as you see down here, it's in verse 2, read verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is talking about the great awakening. Not only will those that are alive be awakened, but, you know, like we read over in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Corinthians, that the dead will rise first. That's what this is talking about. And you see right here in... Uh, verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So this is what we can expect right here is that there's a change in humanity where those that are wise will start to shine. So usually when we speak about change, there's always um, physical uh, attributes that you see. So are we expecting to see anything physical or will this be a change spiritual? I believe it's going to be a spiritual change. In fact, I believe that most people are actually going to miss this change because when you jump down to verse 10, look what it says. Read verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So only the wise are really going to experience this or recognize what's going on, whereas the wicked are not going to even know what's going on. So it's going to go missed by a lot of people. So if they miss it, what is the end result for them? The end result is you have a group of people who are these these wise people of the earth. We, we recognize, you know, from the Septuagint translation of the book of Daniel that it is talking about those who keep the law. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let me jump you over to the Septuagint translation of the book of Daniel and read what it says there in verse 10. Many must be tested and thoroughly whitened and tried with fire and sanctified. But the transgressors shall transgress, and none of the transgressors shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So when it's talking about wicked over there, it's talking about those who transgress. And what are they transgressing? The laws. They're talking about the law. Remember, Michael is the angel that stands up for those who keep the law. Yeah. So those who are obeying the law will be tried and tested. This is what's known as Jacob's trouble. This is why they call it Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Because they're the ones who's going to be tried and tested. But he says that the the ones who transgress the law shall not understand, but only the wise shall understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it and the purpose of this video is that all it is is expected to go down on what date? December 25th. So are you convinced? I am convinced. Um... Yeah, especially because it lines up, the month lines up, and the day lines up, um, and everything that's happening um, seems to line up with, with that date. That's a very important watch date. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people having dreams, there's a lot of people having visions, there's a lot of people on Stellarium, and, you know, watching all kinds of different ways, but, you know... I believe we've shown how the scripture actually confirms that this is going to happen. It's good because the scripture, you want the scripture to, to support, you know, the things that you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, you're not a prophet. And, you know, a lot of times people get things wrong. But when you can line it up with scripture, it's it. I would uh, give it, you know, what thumbs up. I would say, yeah, December the 25th is a very important watch date. Uh, a date to be uh, expecting the wise to start awakening. That's what it looks like to me, y'all. But, you know, what do you think? You know, we pull out your Bible and, and go over to Ezekiel.
chapter 24 go to daniel or chapter 1 go to daniel in chapter 12 you know see if it's, it's see if your bible is saying the exact same thing and if it ain't you know drop it down there in the comment section of this video mm -hmm. but you know it seems to me that it's all saying december 25th so of course we'll be watching and see what happens yeah we'll be watching we won't be uh, making merry as the <laughs> scripture says making merry and uh, you know, follicling around the Christmas tree, we'll be watching uh, to see this great awakening coming in. All right, y'all. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom.